Hello guys, welcome to this lesson. We continue to learn all CRUD operations in Hasura. Today, in this short video, we will see how to remove items. Again, there are two ways to delete items, by primary key and bulk remove. In order to remove by primary key, you just need to know the ID of the item you want to delete. I will take some ID which was marked for delete. Okay, then I expand delete photos by PK, insert my copied ID into the ID field, and because I must return something, I just return ID. If I run this mutation, this record will be removed from database. If you want to remove multiple rows, you need the delete photos mutation. Here you just need to define condition on which all rows will be deleted. In my case, I want to delete all photos where description equals to mark for delete. Then I define returning values. I want to see IDs and photos URLs and also affected rows as well. And now if I run this query, all items with description marked for delete will be deleted. Now, if we try to fetch all photos, we will see only first three items and the clone of the third one. Great, now we are aware how to remove items in Hasura, so let's move on and see you in the next lesson. Hi there! I think you have now quite solid understanding of how to work with mutations. Of course, you can mutate also nested objects. In this video, we will build mutation which inserts a new photo along with predefined command. So let's add a new mutation called insert photo with command. I will use insert photos one, but the same would work for any type of mutations. So I will insert description and photo URL and define some values for it. And then above I will expand also comments and add comment with some text. Now I just define returning fields. It will be ID, description and comments with ID and comment. And now I run this query and we can see that both entities were added. And if you have noticed, we didn't define the ID of the photo for the comment. Hasura resolved it automatically for us, which is great. Just to prove it, we can go and fetch all our photos. And we can see that our last photo has its predefined command. This is how you can also mutate nested objects and it is relevant for any CRUD operation. Feel free to experiment with it and now let's move on and see you in the next lecture. Hello guys! In this quick lesson we will find out how to use variables in our queries. Let's have a look at our create photo mutation. We see that all our values for photo URL and description are hard-coded. It can be convenient until you work in the console, but for real-world applications we need something more dynamic. This is where variables come in. You may have noticed earlier that we have below a section for query variables. Here we just have to define a JSON where key is a variable name and value is our value. So I will create here a JSON with the key photo URL and in the value will be photo with ID 6. Then I will also add a description with text. It is description from value. Now it complains that we define these variables but we have never used them, so let's fix it. After the name of our mutation, query or subscription, we need to open parentheses and declare variables here. 
each variable starts with the dollar sign and after this goes the name which should map with one of the JSON key we created just few seconds ago. Then we have to define a data type of this variable. In our case both have type string and this is required so we add exclamation mark in the end. Then we will do the same also for description. Alright, the latest step is to replace our hard-coded strings with variables. You just need to copy variable name and replace the particular string with it. Like this. Now our query is dynamic and looks also much more cleaner. Now we can run this query to be sure that everything is working. Perfect. And the last small hint where you can find the types. If you are not sure which data type should have some variable, you can find it out in docs. If we find our insert photo one mutation, we can see that the type of our description is string as well as photo URL. But for ID, it is UID type and for created ad, it is time step type. So this is how you can use variables in your GraphQL queries and we are moving forward to the next lesson. Hello guys, welcome to this lesson. Let's talk today about subscriptions. Subscriptions are very similar to queries and everything what we have learned for queries like filtering, sorting, pagination and so on, this everything is applicable to subscriptions. Let's take our query get photos and convert it to subscription. The only thing I have to do is to change query to subscription and that's it. If we run this query, we will get the same result as if we called a regular query. But after this, request is not being destroyed. You can see that it stays to listen for changes. Let's try to add a new photo and check if real time is working. I will open one more browser tab with Hasura console and in this second tab I will add a new photo. So here we go and I run this query. And now if we scroll a little bit down we will see our new photo without any page reloading. That's cool, isn't it? If we want to stop listening to new values we can stop our subscription by clicking stop button. So that's it. If you need some real-time functionality for your application, please use subscription. Now you know how to do it. And we are moving forward and see you in the next video.